we're going on to our second last speaker of the night. She is doing her PhD at Sydney University in cell biology and is also not entirely sure what her thesis is even on anymore. So she's <laughs> more than qualified to do this event, I think. Um, she has an ornamental cabbage plant called Gildenfern. <laughs> and has finished 15 GoldenEye levels on the 00 Agent difficulty. So that PhD is going really well. Please welcome to the stage, Lee Nicholson. Hear that? Probably not because this is a dog whistle that has a frequency of around 23,000 hertz. It's perfectly audible for dogs, and yet is pitched higher than the human ability to hear, which is a shame because I was transmitting the location of a bunch of money, so I'm sorry, scientists, you'll have to find your research funding elsewhere. <laughs> but the real mystery is what evolutionary benefit does this canine hearing ability provide? The greatest changes in the physiology of dogs have resulted from their domestication 10,000 years ago and the subsequent selective breeding. Here is the handsome specimen that was a pug in the 19th century. Here is a pug today. <laughs> and based on this trend, here is an artist's impression of a pug 100 years in the future. <laughs> However, I propose that advanced canine high-frequency perception has occurred unintentionally. A 2016 study revealed the 20 most popular dog names, 15 of which are names that end in an E sound, the highest frequency vowel sound that humans can make. You can clearly see we're conditioning our dogs to hear high-pitched sounds. It's well known that the more food or walks or cuddles that a human has to provide for that pet dog, the higher pitch of voice that person uses. <laughs> Canines able to perceive high frequencies of the human vocal range are more likely to hear the regular human utterances of dinner time and do you want some food? And respond appropriately. With such positive connotations for high-pitched sounds, it's no wonder that low-frequency sounds like thunderstorms or fireworks scare dogs so much. An uncute dog without high-pitched hearing is unlikely to hear, uh, is unlikely to be offered food by its human companions, but wouldn't be able to hear it otherwise, and so will likely have to be fend for itself on the streets. An uncute dog with high-pitched hearing would only be able to hear the calls for food from the cuter dogs around it, then will consume itself with its envy. <laughs> A cute dog without high-pitched hearing would remain tragically unaware of the availability of food. <laughs> Therefore, we can see that it is the cute dogs with high-pitched hearing that are most likely to receive high-protein food and emotional support from its human companions. <laughs> we can even predict the pitch of canine-directed speech in humans using this simple graph. The cuter the dog is, the higher the voice. Cuteness measured in standard units of omgas is calculated by a simple formula. The sum of how funny the dog's name is, added to the, um, a number of accessories it is wearing, divided by its size. A small dog called Count Borkula, wearing sunglasses, <laughs> is 1.3 omgas. <laughs> For reference, pandas are 0.9 omgas, baby kittens are 0.1 kilo omgas, <laughs> and 0.03 nano omgas. <laughs> We can extrapolate this cuteness pitch graph over 10,000 more years of domestication to find that we're approaching an average of over 14 trillion cubic mega omgas in one super hearing pup. This event horizon is known as the Orpocalypse. <laughs>
<laughs> One prediction from this model is that the highest pitch pitches will be directed at dogs with the strongest OMGA measurement. This is easily demonstrated as the largest natural resource of OMGAs is found in baby puppies. Deeper sounds with larger wavelengths don't fit in their teeny little ears. <laughs> Therefore, communicating with them <laughs> requires sound waves with the highest pitch and therefore the shortest wavelength. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, the range of canine hearing is approximately 67 hertz to 45,000 hertz, and yet the fundamental frequency of human speech is only 85 hertz to 300 hertz. So why do dogs need such extra hearing ability when a smaller range would allow them to hear a human quite well? Well, let us consider that 300 hertz would allow a dog to hear one human. <laughs> Therefore, 45,000 hertz allows them to hear 150 humans simultaneously. This ability could be crucial for the advancement of geopolitics. Instead of the endless, ineffective policy meetings conducted by humans, Imagine a UN staffed by high-powered, high-frequency negotiators 150 times better at communicating than we are. The implication of this innate bond between human and dog is crucial for our mutual survival. When catastrophe strikes or the nuclear sirens ring out or your child is screaming, who better to hear the call than man's best friend? Thank you.